Yes guys, what's going on people? Welcome back to my personal channel. It's Lewis G for another video for you guys today. In this video, we're actually going to be talking about transfer news, which is the first time we've spoken about in a while, probably since deadline day. And we're going to be talking about Declan Rice, because Chelsea and Declan Rice are now back in this love story again. Chelsea look to be revitalising their interest in the West Ham midfielder. And we're going to delve into all the news and the topics surrounding Declan Rice to Chelsea in this video. But as usual, before we start, if you guys haven't done so already, smash that like button and hit that subscribe button. Help me get this close to 17k because I'm not gonna lie the road to 20k is looking like a bit of a madness right now So guys just help me get to 17k right now. and We're gonna take it a K at a time So please press that like button and that subscribe button be a little gracious if you guys could to me because I really need the help right now And yeah, let's go straight into this video now like we already said at the start of the video Chelsea looked to be reigniting their interest in Declan Rice and there was a lot of interest between both sides throughout the summer Chelsea had him down as their number one DM pick and I'm I'm already sure, even though it hasn't really been gone out as fact, Declan Rice did want this move as well. And there's been an air of, of inevitability about this entire transfer. This transfer was on the cards throughout the summer, but Chelsea always had their focus on other transfers, like trying to get Ben Chilwell in and the back and forth between Leicester and Chelsea over whether he's going to go for 80 million or 40 million, and then the compromise around the 50 million mark. You will remember the Kai Havertz transfer and how long it took to get that one across the line. Fair play because Marina was just trying to get it taken down from 130 million, and she did get it down to 62 million plus 8 million in add ons. Uh, there was also the defensive reinforcement having to get in a goalkeeper, getting in Malang Saar, getting in Thiago Silva as well. And Declan Rice, even though we said a transfer like Saeed Ben Rama would have been the icing on the cake sort of transfer, it did look like Declan Rice was that sort of transfer. And we didn't really try and push for Declan Rice until the final few weeks of the transfer window because that was more the point where we'd got Thiago Silva and Kai Havertz and we could actually have that focus on the DM. But I do think it was too little too late, especially with how much West Ham value him as a player and how important he is to their side. It didn't make sense that even with how much of a mess West Ham are in terms of the board and in terms of the connection between the fans and the players and the fans and the board, I don't think they were going to sell Declan Rice. They weren't going to sell him at this point in the window. We had a little bit of hope that because West Ham hadn't really got any transfers in, that potentially David Moyes' hand could be forced to try and sell Declan Rice to get some funds in to get the players they wanted. But West Ham didn't call West Ham called our bluff. They had us wait towards the end of deadline day. And we still tried to push to sign him, but there was a couple reasons why eventually we had to put this transfer on hold. Initially, it was because it was depend on how many players that we could, we could sell as well to try and recoup the money that West Ham would want for Declan Rice. But we had two first team transfers that were potentially going to happen within the final few days of the window that fell through, which meant that we didn't have the money to push this transfer through. Uh, David Moyes already said that he was going to demand a maximum fee for Declan Rice as well, saying that Chelsea would have to pay Bank of England money to make it happen. And since then, West Ham have been trying to hold down Declan Rice to a bumper new contract to try and pin him down for as long as possible in a West Ham shirt due to concerns that Chelsea's interest hasn't died down in the midfielder. And if West Ham are right about anything, it is about Chelsea's relentlessness. Chelsea haven't lost interest in Declan Rice to DM and Frank Lampard has already solidified him as his number one and only option for DM for Chelsea. With Chelsea having a small interest in Thomas Partey towards the end of deadline day, but because Lampard didn't see him as the perfect type of DM for him, he decided he wasn't going to pursue that transfer as much and decided to focus on waiting for Declan Rice for either January or for the summer. But I think now due to Chelsea's form over the last few games and our struggles around the middle of the park due to us not having a natural DM, I think Lampard is trying to force Ch Chelsea's hand more and it does look more and more likely that Chelsea are going to try and make another move for Declan Rice in January. The ball's in Rice's court. He already, has a tr he already has a contract at West Ham till 2024, but West Ham do want to offer him new terms and a much bigger pay rise if he signs a new contract. And it's up to him to make this choice because he could be tempted to sign based on West Ham's recent form. They did lose to Liverpool over the weekend, but their form over the last few weeks has been really surprising. They've nicked points off Manchester City and smashed Leicester City 3-0 at their own ground. And let's be real, we're looking at West Ham as potential relegation candidates. And they're still around the bottom half of the table, but they look a lot more promising than people expected them to be. So that could force Declan Rice to maybe want to stay a little bit longer, maybe stay to see how the season ends. But 
I wouldn't even blame him either for leaving too. Chelsea have a con continued interest in him and due to his history with the Chelsea Academy and his relationship with Chelsea players such as Mason Mount and Tammy Abraham and Fikayo Tomori as a result, it does look inevitable that Declan Rice will become a Chelsea player and it's a case of when and not if. He even went on holiday with half of the Chelsea team to Mykonos and I think when they all had to self-isolate because of the virus, again I'm not getting demonetized so I'm not saying the word, but because of that he was also with them as well which shows that there is a very close relationship between him and a lot of the Chelsea players. So like I said, it does look inevitable and this does look like this is a transfer that will happen and it's a case of is it going to happen in January or is it going to happen in the summer. Now Frank Lampard sees Declan Rice as his first choice option for DM due to his size and due to his ability to play the ball out accurately from deep which is two things that we have struggled in with Now Frank Lampard sees Declan Rice as his number one option for DM due to his size and due to his ability to play out from the back accurately from deep as well. This is two things that we have struggled with from midfield. There's been times where we've been overpowered in the midfield due to our lack of size and we've also struggled aerially as a result from that too. Passing the ball out from deep hasn't been as much of a problem, but I do think our progressive passes have been a big issue. We've seen N'Golo Kante when he's been in the pivot, he struggled passing forwards and he struggled with accurate passes too. Mateo Kovacic has a good forward pass in him, but he hasn't really got a decisive pass in him. He's great at ball progression, but it's another case of when he gets to the final third, what is he going to do? Jorginho, we all know about his quality of passing range, but I also think in the pivot as well, he keeps his head down a little bit too much. And I think we've struggled without having a natural DM in the side. And this is part of the reason why he's pursuing Declan Rice so aggressively. Now, we've seen us try a two-man pivot so many times. We've struggled for creativity and dominance in the midfield as a result of it. Kante and Jorginho, barely any forward pass with them. Uh, Kante and Kovacic, the issue with them is that they both press forward because they're both natural ball progressors. Same thing with the Jorginho and Kovacic pivot except both of them just didn't make any progressive forward passes and they just, they just slowed the game down too much together. We've even tried Jorginho in the lone DM position and that's not too bad on the passing range. Him on his own, he's better and he sprays passes around and starts attacks a lot more. But he still doesn't have the athleticism in his game and he gets overpowered way too much that, than you would want to see from a natural DM. Last game out, we did try and Golo Kante out in a lone DM role. It did work. I'm going to say that straight out. But I, I don't think Frank Lampard wants it. I also think N'Golo Kante would struggle in a lone DM position against a team that would aggressively press us. Uh, the thing with Burnley, they were fine, but they played with a low block and they just defended deep most of the match, which meant that there was barely any pressure on N'Golo Kante unless they were trying to start counter-attacks. If he's facing a team with a strong press on him, I don't know if N'Golo Kante has it in him. I've said I think N'Golo Kante is the best option that we have right now as a DM because he has a lot of the capabilities that you would want in a DM. But I still think with N'Golo Kante, he's a natural box-to-box -box midfielder. He likes roaming around the box and making recovery tackles and breaking up play. He's not going to sit deep. You can tell him to, but I think against a team with a much stronger midfield, I think he's going to be going out, varying out a lot more to try and win the ball out further up the field, and that will leave the defence exposed as a result. Sources have said as well that Frank Lampard doesn't really see N'Golo Kante as a lone DM, prefers to play him on the right to him in a midfield three, which again, I hate to say I told you so, but you man tried to mock me in the comments section after the Burnley game, so yeah, I did tell you so. N'Golo Kante isn't a lone DM. He can be in the future once he loses his legs, but he prefers Roman around the field he, he's got the biggest engine in the squad there's no reason why he's going to sit deep I've already said it enough times that is not his game he is a box-to-box -box midfielder with a lot of great defensive attributes in his game but he is a box-to-box -box midfielder that's why we're pushing for Declan Rice and I, it could happen but it's tough to see it happening in, in mid-season West Ham selling their best their best player to one of their biggest rivals i mean they like pissing off their fans but they don't like doing it to that point despite his love for chelsea as well declan rice also has a lot of respect and love for west ham too and i think him leaving in january to join us would burn a lot of bridges with the west ham faithful so i doubt it would happen but i also don't think it's completely off the table roman abramovich has the cash for it straight up if he wants this transfer to happen this transfer will happen depending on where west ham are in january as well if West Ham are in bad form and are hovering around the, the relegation zone yet again he might feel more inclined to leave and in fact I think throughout
throughout the entire time he's been at West Ham. They haven't finished above the top half, except for maybe one tenth place finish. So if they're in that position again with him being one of their key players now, he could be more inclined to leave. And also with Chelsea, potentially, well, if we're being real, it shouldn't be potentially. But if Chelsea goes to the knockout stages of the Champions League, he would be a great transfer to bring in without having to worry about whether he's eligible or not. And also with how cramped the fixture list is this season, we could we be really screwed with if we lost the midfielder. If N'Golo Kante goes down with an injury, which after last season you wouldn't be surprised to see happen again, we'd be screwed without DMs. We'd have to play either Jorginho or Billy Gilmore. I think Billy Gilmore might be alright, but he's still going to need a little bit of time to acclimatise after coming back from injury whenever he returns. And Jorginho, we've already seen him play as a lone DM, so we already know the strengths of it and we already know the weaknesses of it. But I think the one thing that this, that this team is missing is a natural DM, which is why... If we can do it, yeah, let's just go for Declan Rice because that was a final piece of the puzzle that we were missing, which is just a natural DM. I'm really happy with all the transfer activity that we've done throughout the last year, but we're still missing that one final piece, and that is just a DM. So if we can get Declan Rice, and if money ain't a factor, which it rarely is with Chelsea, please let's go for it. Hell, with Marina tax, you'll probably go down to 40, 60 million or maybe someone else going on loan the other way. Maybe they'll take Tomori for half a season, I don't know. But guys... Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of the thoughts I've made down below. Let me know if you guys want to see Declan Rice or if there's another DM that you guys potentially like to see and we could talk about potential options in another video on this channel as well. But guys, let me know your opinions. Let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys tomorrow for the Wrens preview. Yeah, it is Wrens. Take care. Like and subscribe. Up the Chelsea.